Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Well, my week away from Old Stonewell Farm just wasn't enough, and I find myself saying the verses of the psalmist, Why is my soul still so cast down? So I went to answer that question by heading into the woods to explore where perhaps I can create a rustic prayer chapel out of logs. As I explored, I realized that it's in the woods where my soul finds peace, it finds joy, and I'm not alone. Henry David Thoreau once wrote, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discovered that I had not lived. So my husband wanted to know, where did I buy the Amish dress? No, it is not an Amish dress. It is a dress that I got from a California company who specializes in sustainable fashion, fabrics that are grown um, in a sustainable way. There were two colors to choose from, green and blue, and I should have gotten the green because this blue does look like an Amish blue. You should see when I put my white apron on, I really do look Amish. But I've sat down for a few moments here at the farm. It's been busy. We are getting some new uh, stone steps put back on the back porch here. I'm gonna make a new doorway and some stone steps and a walkway. So that's been going on, a lot of busy work and the garden isn't looking its best. I just haven't had time to keep it up, but the chickens are really enjoying it because every night they go to the garden and uh, my husband laughs. It is a buffet for them. It's the, uh, the golden corral of Old Stonewell Farm. Come and eat all that you want. So yes, they were jumping in the beets and the lettuce and they were enjoying themselves. So I guess I planted a garden for God's creatures, which is okay with me. So the other day my parents came up and I took my dad on top of Sophie's Hill. Haven't been up there in a while. Maybe it's my age. I don't know. My knees have been bothering me. Um, but that steep climb, I just haven't made it in a while. I wanted to take my dad up there. Now he's in his 80s. And so we went and I said to him, Dad, I have an idea. I want to build a chapel on top of this hill. Now, for those of you who've been coming to Old Stonewell Farm, you have heard before how that is a prayerful place for me. Because on top of the hill, there's a little bit of a clearing that is just so beautiful. It looks like a little retreat area. Well, I got the other idea the other day that um, there were so many logs that fell, trees that fell, and there are some trees that need to be cut down. I'm thinking, why not build a rustic little log chapel? So I took my dad up there and we scouted out a location and he thinks we can do it. I think I can do it too. I've spent many hours watching YouTube videos on how to do a log house with only a primitive ax and your own strength. I don't know how much strength I have or how much um, capability I have with an ax, but I'm gonna give it a try. My husband did a few years ago. He did buy me a, um, an electric saw and he doesn't allow me to use it though. So much for my birthday present. He says that I can use it, but only when he's home. And my parents cringe with the idea of me using anything electric that can saw off more than tree limbs. I wanna try and make this log structure with just using an ax and I will allow my dad or my husband to use the electric saw. But I wanted to do that because I realized I needed a place to retreat and stress to enter my life again. And I don't wanna live that way. I realized that something needs to change and the only way it's going to change if I commit to that change. And I haven't been going up Sophie's Hill and it's always been a, a beautiful location for me here at the farm. I've always wanted to utilize that area, that location more, but I haven't. And it hit me, now's the time to do it. 
So if I build a little prayer chapel, then I can climb up there, walk up there after my run on the rail trail because that hill borders the rail trail. And I could just end my morning run by walking up the hill, more exercise, and spend time centering myself for the day. I really need to do that. We need to do that together. Things are just too busy and the busyness doesn't allow us any time to really think through problems, to really hear the inner voice inside of us, to hear the spirit speak to us. Whenever we're busy, we don't slow down enough to really listen to what our lives are saying to us, what our heart is saying. So I'm going to recommit myself to building a chapel on that hill. Again, it's going to be very rustic, um, probably more in line with if you are from the Northeast, if you've ever been to Morristown, New Jersey, or Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, there are uh, soldiers' huts from the Revolutionary War. At my log chapel is going to really evoke one of those soldier huts. I, I hope, at least that's what's in my mind. But I want to retreat because I don't want the stress to dictate my life. I don't want to get caught up in drama. And this summer, I've been surrounded by too much drama, by too many stories of friends I hear who are also facing some stressful times. And it's just not a way to live. The other day when I was on my run, I noticed a big turtle right in the middle of the path, and it reminded me of a sermon I preached many years ago from Dr. Seuss. I never thought I would ever be preaching about Dr. Seuss, but there was a story that Dr. Seuss wrote called Yertle the Turtle, and Yertle is the turtle king who wants to have you know control of the whole pond, and that is his, his kingdom. And he wants to see more and more of his kingdom. So he commands the other little turtles to, to stack up on one another so that his throne can be higher and higher and higher. So the little turtles have to build this, this, you know, this high throne for Yertle to, to sit upon them. And so Yertle is on top of all these other turtles' backs. And it's not fun for them at all, but Yertle wants to see his entire kingdom. He wants to be in control. He wants to have the power. Well, one of the little turtles, Mac, he burps and topples all the other turtles. And that was the end of Yertle the turtle. And there's a great quote in this children's story where Mac, the turtle at the bottom, says, I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down at the bottom, we too should have rights. It's a great children's story about political power, about power, about abuse, about um, climbing on top of the backs of others to get ahead. And that is so not good. But yet that is what I'm seeing more and more. And I don't want to be part of it. I also went to um, the local nursery Last week, I often go there. I don't have a green thumb. I have visions of beautiful gardens here at the farm, but it's slowly getting there. So whenever I'm feeling like I need to clear out my head or feeling a little down, I often go to a nursery and look at all the flowers and the plants and I dream and I envision what could be. So I went to the nursery the other day and they had a pond with all these fish and you could feed the fish, so I did. So when I tossed the feed, there was a feeding frenzy. It was unbelievable. These fish were like jumping out of the water trying to get the feed and and it was just, it was mayhem. So I fed them again because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Same thing happened, a feeding frenzy, mayhem all around. But that's when I noticed little fish being being trampled on, little fish off to the side, just not even bothering anymore to try because why? And that's what I'm seeing in my life, really close to home. There's been, um, well, there's been a feeding frenzy, it seems, with people in, in the workforce that are trying to get ahead, you know, more, more money, more power, more prestige. In such a, a time of transition that one organization is going through, 
there is this feeding frenzy to get ahead. And when that happens, there seems to be trampling on others, those who are good workers. I realized when I was on vacation that not only I just didn't like what I was seeing, I didn't want to be part of it. And I needed to just reprioritize my life. I need to, to reconnect and get back to what gives me joy. And so when I got back here to Old Stonewell Farm, I made that climb up on Sophie's Hill and I remembered once again how so many years ago when I bought this farm that I wanted to create a prayer area on top of that hill. Now's the time. And I was inspired by seeing the old churches in Maryland and Delaware and we did drive by Valley Forge and I mentioned that to my husband. I said, we have to go there. I used to go there during my childhood many times, little day trips in the summer to see the soldier's hut. So I came back inspired to build such a hut and make it a prayer chapel on top of Sophie's Hill. I need that prayer chapel because I need to find a way to stop letting stress, to stop letting the drama of life affect me, to get me down. I mentioned that to my dad when we were up on the hill scouting out a location and I said, dad, I've been a little down lately. I just don't know anymore where the world is going. And not just that, but I really don't like what I see in my own little inner circles. The lack of trust, the lack of hope, the positioning for power, the grabbing for, for positions that are opened, whether you're qualified or not. I won't even go there. What has happened? What has happened to the world? So I need to find that space to really get back to joy. I mentioned how I often go to a nursery whenever I want to clear my head or if I'm feeling a little bit down. I remember years ago when I lived in New Jersey, there was one such moment that I was really struggling with something and I drove to a nursery and I just walked around aimlessly getting lost in the beautiful flowers. And it was then that an elderly lady, um, she was also there at the nursery, she, I guess, noticed my heavy heart. And she stopped, began talking to me, and we began sharing. And, and I said to her, this is why I came to the nursery. I just needed to find some joy. And she smiled and she said, wow, well, you've come to the right place. And then she pointed to the sign of the nursery. I did not even pay attention to what the name of the business was. Turns out the very place that I found joy was called Joy's Nursery. So we need to take that time to, to just walk away from anything that is stressing us. We need to find the strength, the courage, the commitment to say no to drama, to, to call out what is wrong in the world when people are positioning for power and jockeying for positions. And, you know, we need to be vocal. We need to say, wait a minute, something's not right here. Something's not right here. And we're not going to find that strength to speak up until we retreat and center ourselves and pray. So here at the farm, I am once again going to revisit finally doing something with Sophie's Hill that I've always wanted to do. And I hope that I can recreate a, a soldier's hut from the 18th century that will be my little prayer chapel. Um, if not, it will probably be just a lean-to of logs or maybe a canvas tent from the 18th century. But whatever it's going to be, I know I need to get on top of that hill, my little prayer spot. Because when I was up there today, when I put down the blanket and I stared off at the sky and I watched the leaves rustling and the clouds moving, 
Well, it was so relaxing, I almost fell asleep. But it was also peaceful. It was a place where I felt joy. So my friends, find your place of joy. Find your place where you can retreat so then you can face this world. Until next week, God bless. I rest my soul on Jesus when the mountain shake I put my trust in Jesus the moment I awake and when my soul is lost at sea he will be Oh uh...